I'd like to talk briefly about what so many of you have touched upon, the future of Tampa Bay and the future of St. Pete. Susanna and I have lived and worked, Susanna in Beijing, New York, as I did, together in Paris, together in London. We love those cities, love them still. But you couldn't pay us to move away from Tampa Bay and St. Pete. You couldn't. And there's a reason for that, because people talk to us, our friends, when they come to visit, and they marvel at what, what we have here. And I tell them, and I tell my colleagues here, artists and architects and friends in St. Pete and in Tampa Bay, this is the beginning. We are at a moment, I think, Susanna agrees with me. We are at a moment, it's like we were in Paris in 1904. It's like we were in Berlin in 1922. It's like we were, if we were in New York in 1948 and 49. The city and the place and the bay is blossoming in terms of the world of art. And that has a profound effect upon the world of business, education, and all of that. We've got some of the best universities clustered here. You can't have a great city without great universities. We've got young people coming here, people attracted. People worry about their kids moving away, and then they find that their kids are coming back. So that's a marvelous thing, and we feel very proud to be part of trying to help that happen. Finally, I'll talk a little bit about the, my profession, because I'm an architect, a designer, partly an engineer. Um, this building, what we see behind us, was the first bit. I was then design director for HOK, which is based in, uh, it's a national firm, important firm, a really good firm. I was the design director. This was the first building that we did using serious 3D CAD, a system called Revit. Now that system's 12 years old. Um, new systems are coming online. We can visualize things using that and all the software that's developing to make you, allow you to walk through a building that doesn't yet exist and say, oh, I don't like that wall. Let's move it. Let's change the door. We need more space here. And that is giving us a flexibility to, uh, it's, it's another tool. I still do watercolors. I still work with pencil. I still scribble. I still think in my head, we still build physical models, but it's one more tool. And it's, uh, and it's a multitude of extraordinary new tools that are part of what we've learned in terms of the web, et cetera. Finally, um, Paul, you mentioned what our mission should be for the next decade. I personally, and my profession, we know what our mission is for the next decade and for the next century. And that is to figure out and to design buildings that help the environment rather than hurt it. We need to go much more sustainably. And I'm pleased that the new administration in DC is taking that as one of their first, first missions. It's an existential mission. Why is it important for architects Buildings in their construction and in their use and in their operation over their lives use 40% of the energy we use in this country. That's more than we use for transportation. It's about what we use for industry. So if we can make our, this building, we made it very sustainable. It's very well insulated. We sited it and put the windows in places that we were where they made sense and not where they didn't make sense. Um, so it's a very sustainable building. And I'm thrilled to be part of our community and to be part of trying to help things happen. Thank you all very much.